Good morning. We hope all is well with you and your families. As you know, our state recently experienced one of the worst and most catastrophic storms in history. Hurricane Helene left a path of destruction throughout Western North Carolina and the Southeast US. That is quite frankly, unfathomable to even imagine. As the pictures, videos, and stories continue to come in, our hearts are absolutely broken. While we were extremely fortunate here in the central part of the state to avoid major impacts from the storm, our brothers, sisters, family members, co-workers, fellow co-op members, and fellow North Carolinians are dealing with a worst case scenario. Homes, businesses, and towns are completely gone. Many, many lives have been forever impacted. The path to recovery in the western part of the state will be an extremely long process. Years and years to recover from the devastation that has occurred. Thousands remain without power, without access to water or basic essentials. The power restoration process has been extremely slow and will continue to be slow moving. There has been a complete destruction of the grid in very remote and hard to access areas. Our thoughts and prayers are lifted up for everyone in the southeast U.S. and western North Carolina, including our sister co-ops, Rutherford, Blue Ridge, French Broad, and Haywood EMCs that cover the mountain region of the state. Our very own line workers and contract crews from right here at Central Electric, who have traveled to other parts of the state and country to help restore power, as well as all of the emergency and essential personnel working to pick up the pieces. Before we move forward into the business portion of our meeting today, we would like to take a moment to remember those impacted by the storm, acknowledge our tremendous thanks to those working long hours on end in the recovery areas, as well as those in our community who are supporting efforts to collect supplies. If you are looking for a way to help and be a part of the effort to support Western North Carolina, the co-op is a drop-off collection site for the supply drive hosted by Holly Springs Baptist Church in Broadway. If you have non-perishable items, water, canned goods, diapers, wipes, anything, please feel free to drop them by our lobby and we will package and deliver them to the church. There are many, many great groups in our community collecting supplies and anything you have to contribute is much needed. God bless each of you and your families and we'll now turn the meeting over to our board president, Rebecca Kogan, to begin the business portion of today's meeting. Thank you. Good morning. Welcome to Central Electric's 2024 Annual Meeting of the Members. I'm Becky Cogan, President of Central Electric Board of Directors. Thank you for taking some of your time to be with us and participate in the yearly report of the Cooperative's business and to celebrate 83 years of being your trusted energy partner. This year, we once again used an online and mail-in voting system for the director election which also served as registration for our annual meeting. Thank you to everyone who participated and submitted a ballot. And as promised, we will reveal the big winners of the random drawing for 10 $250 gift cards for participating members at the end of this presentation. At the end of the meeting, we will also reveal the recipient of $2,000 annual meeting scholarship. The scholarship is being awarded through a random drawing to a local graduate from the class of 2024. Thank you to all of the 2024 graduates who submitted an entry for the scholarship. One last piece of housekeeping. If you have any questions or comments, please send us a direct message and they will be answered individually at the conclusion of the meeting. I would like to now bring the 2024 annual meeting to order. At this time, Apostle Joseph Green from Try Jesus Ministries will provide the invocation for our meeting today. Dolores Shaw, Central Electric's Director of Operational Support, will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, and then Cynthia Curran, the Cooperative's Attorney, will provide the meeting report. Good morning, and thank you for showing up. You may bow your heads. Dear Father, we come to you on this beautiful morning. Thank you for everyone represented here in this place and giving us the physical ability to be able to move and to maneuver in our daily function. We not only seek your protection going forward, but we thank you for governing them throughout the year. We thank you that you have uh, covered us from dangerous storms, catastrophes, events, and death. As we gather here together in unity, 
in this place, we ask that you bestow your blessings and protection upon the employees who have the task of dealing with the public and ensuring that each member is provided service. We ask that you guide the board members and corporate officials with wisdom, compassion, and clarity as they are tasked with the decision to guide and to direct this corporation into greatness and to be able to grow and meet the needs of every member being serviced. Protect the electric linemen and engineers as they place their lives in danger on a daily basis. Give them the mental clarity and alertness they would need to ensure not only their safety, but the safety of the public as well. Strengthen them during the times when they are tired and overworked while they deal with power outages, fallen trees, and inclement weather. God, we ask that you extend your protection upon the Central Electric Company family and members from house fires, fallen trees, power outages, and any other event that even pose a potential risk in their safety or their health. We ask that you protect the company from mechanical malfunctions and system failures, from electronic breaches and computer shutdowns. We give you the rising energy costs, uh, financial costs and daily stressors that may cause rising tension and pressure. Cover the drivers and protect them from accidents as they all travel, no matter the weather condition, but especially during hazardous condition. You said that in your word that acknowledge us in all your ways and you will direct our path. God, we ask that you guide us in every aspect of the company and every individual that's represented here in whatever capacity they contribute to the growth, maintenance, and well-being of this corporation. Grant them the spirit of unity to work together in deeds and in kindness. Now to the Central Electric Company family, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord face shine upon you. In Jesus' name, we pray, amen. Good morning. Please join me in saying the Pledge of Allegiance. A pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hello. I welcome you again to our Central EMC Annual Member Meeting for 2024. I'm Cynthia M. Curran, General Counsel for the Cooperative. This is the start of our business meeting. Our bylaws define a quorum for this meeting as 2% of the Central EMC membership, or 413 members. Our bylaws also provide that for this remote streaming annual meeting, we count each member who submitted a ballot either electronically or by mail, as attending this remote meeting for purposes of a quorum. Central EMC had at least 720 members submit a ballot. Therefore, the number of members participating by ballot clearly exceeds our quorum requirement. We may therefore proceed with our business meeting. The cooperative mailed a notice of this annual meeting to each member by United States Mail on August 23, 2024. This notice of annual meeting was prominently displayed and published on the cover wrap of the Carolina Country Magazine. We've also reviewed the proof of mailing from the Carolina Country publication, which confirms that the notice was mailed to all central members on August 23, 2024. Both the notice and the proof of mailing satisfy our bylaw requirements and each document is a part of the cooperative's official files. The minutes of the 2023 annual member meeting have been posted on the Central EMC website. In accordance with the membership standard directives, these minutes of the 2023 annual member meeting will be submitted to the Central EMC Board of Directors for review and approval. I will now ask Meg Moss, Director of Marketing and Member Engagement, to draw the winner of the 2024 
random scholarship. Meg, we're really excited about this. All Get a right. Given, Meg. Let's give it a tumble and see who our winner is. Who gets the scholarship? Here's the scholarship. And we have a winner. Thank you, Cynthia. Thank you, Meg. We're looking forward to that. So stay tuned for the reveal of the winner at the end of our meeting. And next, to bring you up to date on the business of the cooperative for 2024, we're pleased to present our cooperative business report in video format. Thank you. Since Central Electric was founded over 80 years ago, our goal has always been to bring progress and new opportunities to our region. Relying on the strength of our community, our parents' and grandparents' generation came together and brought power to Central North Carolina, allowing the growth and prosperity we see today. As your trusted energy partner, we continue to rely on each other and stay focused on finding new energy solutions, enriching our communities, and driving economic development. As we reflect on the past year, we celebrate all we have achieved and look ahead to carry our progress forward. Providing reliable power to you is and always will be a top priority for our co-op. We understand the importance of our service to you. It powers your everyday lives and keeps our communities up and running. Updating, upgrading, and adding new technology and equipment are all ways we proactively maintain our system to protect reliability. We are also constantly adding devices and procedures to protect the system against Mother Nature, as well as the ability to isolate and restore outages as quickly as possible. Keeping our power lines clear of overgrown vegetation helps improve our service reliability. Despite the challenges we constantly face, we are proud to maintain a 99.9% .9 reliability rating. Know that our dedicated employees are prepared and ready to respond in the event of any power outages. Another part of the cooperative difference will always be grounded in direct connections with you, our members. Our team members, board members, and leadership are right here in our community, serving you and always available to assist you. We are continually expanding the ways we are serving you in an effort to provide superior member service. Our Energy Advisor app can analyze your energy use and help find areas for improvement. You can instantly view accurate, detailed breakdowns of daily peaks, and the Energy Advisor provides recommendations for low-cost or no-cost actions to save money on utility bills. Visit the Energy Advisor page under the Energy Efficiency section at cemcpower.com to get started. In 2023, we launched several programs to enhance safety and reliability across the co-op. We began using upgraded weather monitoring systems to help determine safe working conditions for our crews. We have implemented a fail-safe site at an off-site location which we can use to keep our communities energized in the event of emergency. And Central Electric was recognized by the National Rural Electric Cooperative Association for excellence in cybersecurity. These innovations in technology and implementation reach across our co-op. We would like to thank all of our dedicated staff who worked hard to keep our lights on. It's important for cooperatives to work together to help maintain affordable energy options for our members, as well as ensuring the reliability and sustainability of the grid moving forward. This collective spirit is on display with the innovative battery storage technology at our Docks Road substation near Spout Springs. Integrated with our existing substation resources, the added batteries provide considerable help for savings during peak demand and reliable backup power. It's part of a state-of-the-art initiative by North Carolina's electric cooperatives, collectively delivering 40 megawatts of power. As a not-for-profit cooperative, we can pass these savings on to our members. We recognize the impact our industry has on the environment, and so we have joined electric cooperatives across North Carolina to reduce carbon emissions. 
By 2030, we aim to reduce carbon emissions by 50% from our 2005 levels. And by 2050, our goal is to achieve net zero carbon emissions. We are keeping our members at the forefront of innovation in a world of evolving energy needs by planning a smart transition for our energy grid. Renewable energy and the transition to the electrification of vehicles, including hybrid electric models, are part of the overall path to a brighter, sustainable future. Residential renewable energy resources and increasing varieties of electric vehicle models continue to evolve. If you're thinking about adopting residential solar or buying an EV model, there are some helpful tools available on our website, cemcpower.com, under the Solar EV tab. No matter your energy needs, we are here to help you make the right choices. As we transition the grid and continue to incorporate renewable energy resources and the electrification of vehicles to achieve our sustainability goals, we keep working to push forward common sense legislation with lawmakers in both Raleigh and Washington, D.C. Our direction is always to ensure the long-term reliability and affordability of the service we provide to our members. Whether integrating solar energy, expanded battery storage, or charging stations for electric vehicles, we must be careful of the speed of this transition. We believe it's vital to quickly and cost-effectively construct constant and reliable power generation, such as natural gas and nuclear. This is a modern, combined approach that gets us to a reduced carbon future, but also, and most importantly, protects the reliability and affordability of the service for you, our members. Our message is simple. We all must work together to collectively protect safe, reliable, and affordable electric service. One of the many benefits of being a member owner of a not-for-profit electric cooperative like Central Electric is that you, the member, enjoy the benefits and share the financial success of the company rather than outside shareholders. When financial conditions allow, the co-op returns profits to members as capital credits. In 2023, the co-op gave back $1.1 million to members, marking the 15th consecutive year of capital credit retirements, totaling over $17 million during this time frame. In an ideal world, rates would never need to increase. However, the reality is that rates must sometimes be adjusted to ensure the ongoing health of the cooperative. Despite the sometimes wild and sharply increasing costs that we experienced, we were able to adjust and absorb a majority of these costs without any type of increase to our members. However, over time, these cost increases slowly caught up with our rates. Effective from September 1, 2023, a 5% adjustment to the kilowatt hour rate as well as an adjustment of $2 to the basic facility charge was necessary to keep up with the continual rising of operating costs. While a rate adjustment was necessary, your cooperative is continually seeking ways to provide affordable and reliable power to its members at the most competitive cost, now and into the future. For a full schedule of rates and charges, visit our website at cemcpower.com. We will always openly and honestly communicate financial matters with our member owners. Here's how our 2023 revenue was allocated. The majority of each dollar, 60 cents, went towards buying wholesale power. Operational costs, including power line maintenance, vehicle fuel, tree trimming, and taxes, constituted 25 cents of every dollar. Depreciation, reflecting the property or equipment's decreasing value over time, accounts for 9 cents. And 4 cents covered the interest costs from continual borrowing for line construction. The total margins, the revenue, and the service cost difference were just two cents per dollar. Our commitment to community support is amplified by our programs that provide incredible opportunities for the next generation. Local students Fiona Chow and Ethan Fury were sponsored by Central Electric for a unique trip to Washington, D.C. as part of the Electric Cooperative Youth Tour. They joined over 1,800 students nationwide to explore D.C.'s landmarks discuss with U.S. legislators, and gain insights into American history and the electric cooperative model. Thanks to Central Electric's Touchtone Energy Sports Camp Scholarship, local students Levi Scott and Elena Toomer recently attended prestigious basketball camps at UNC Chapel Hill and NC State University, respectively. They experienced college life 
honed their basketball skills and learned teamwork under the guidance of coaches and student athletes. Another key initiative is our annual Bright Ideas grants awarded to local educators to fund innovative classroom projects. In 2023, our cooperative distributed over $15,000 to 14 educators selected by an independent judging panel, benefiting nearly 4,000 students in our communities. Since its inception in 1994, North Carolina's electric cooperatives, including ours, have collectively allocated over $15 million to educators statewide. Central Electric also awarded $2,000 scholarships to local students at Central Carolina Community College and Sand Hills Community College. Additionally, we awarded a college scholarship to one randomly selected student announced during last year's annual meeting. We will be giving away another scholarship during this year's meeting as well. Just as our founding members intended, we work to be a resource and advocate for bettering and enriching the lives of individuals in our community. Our core job is keeping the lights on, and we strive to uphold that service in the face of new and changing challenges. This service focus has always been at the heart of who we are. The cooperative difference is a reflection of our community and will power us into the future. Good morning. Thank you for taking time to join us today. We're excited to bring the cooperative's business directly to you, wherever you may be. The live stream of the meeting will also be available on our Facebook page after the meeting concludes. So, if you couldn't watch live and are just now joining us, welcome. We're glad to have you here with us today. The annual meeting is a crucial part of the cooperative business model. It provides an opportunity to update you on how the co-op is operating to serve you, our members. We serve our members not only by providing safe, reliable, and affordable electricity, but also by being a resource and advocate for improving and enriching the lives of individuals throughout our communities. Our board, a number of our employees, and I are all members of this community and this co-op. We are all affected by the decisions made and we take that responsibility to heart. For the last several years, we have continued to hold our annual meeting virtually, initially during COVID due to safety precautions and continuing virtually since that time in an effort to try and reach a wider audience and demographic of members. To our members who have been reaching out and asking whether we will ever return to an in-person annual meeting we hear you, and we take your comments and questions to heart. At this time, we are continuing to explore the best solutions for our annual meeting moving forward. Our goal with the meeting has always been to continue finding ways to spread the co-op message to more and more members. And that's our dilemma today and moving forward with the annual meeting. Yes, we miss seeing each of you as well and we have always loved the in-person meeting and being able to interact with all of our members who could make it to the in-person meeting. It was always such a fun night, but we also are weighing out the positives of hosting the meeting virtually. Most importantly, being able to share this information and the co-op message with our members wherever you are, whenever is most convenient for you. Not all of our members have the opportunity to make it out to the Civic Center for the meeting. But regardless of whether you're able to watch the meeting now, this weekend, or maybe even next week or next month, this format allows our members to watch whenever is most convenient for you. It remains available and easily accessible for all of our members, not just the members who are able to attend in person. So we just want you to know that is the primary reason for continuing to hold the meeting virtually, to make the best effort to reach all of our members. We will continue to explore options and determine the best route for reaching our members. But that's the cooperative difference. We're actively listening to you, our members. We take your feedback seriously. And whether we hold the meeting in person or virtually, your board of directors and our team of employees are working hard on your behalf each and every day to protect your best interest. 
Our co-op continues to be in a great position. We have dealt with numerous challenges over the last few years. Rising cost, challenges to future reliability from the legislative arena, and continued potential for substantial future growth in our area have all presented a steady stream of challenges. But through strategic planning and a continued focus on maintaining the reliable and affordable service we provide to our members, we are steering our co-op through these challenging environments. We continue to experience strong, steady growth, adding several hundred new members each year. We are currently sitting at an average growth rate hovering around 1.2% annually and almost 6% over the last five years. This is a healthy rate of growth. While our growth remains steady, the increasing potential for substantial future growth in the northern part of our service territory remains strong. Chatham Park, the live, work, play development in Pittsburgh is one of the pocket of significant future growth. Expansion continues and each passing year, development gets closer to moving in to the Moncure Pittsburgh Road side of our system. Several large economic development projects also continue to loom in the Moncure area, as well as several in our Greater Raleigh, Greensboro, Piedmont, Triad region that are currently full speed ahead, including Toyota and Wolf Speed. These developments and projects will present some growth challenges to the co-op in the coming years. While we may not serve the actual production facilities, New housing for job creation due to these expansions is a very real reality. We are preparing now through proactive system planning to accommodate this growth, including a potential substation in the Moncure area. This new substation addition in the northern part of our system will provide ample system capacity to add both residential and or commercial load from Chatham Park and offshoots of these economic development projects. In addition to tackling growth issues at hand today and in the near future, we're also continually looking ahead to be sure we are meeting the needs of our members well into the future. Reliability and capacity of the grid as a whole, not only accounting for the needs of our co-op, but across our state and country is imperative. This starts with active conversations with our legislators. Being an active participant in legislative policies regarding the transition of our electric grid is critical. And our co-op, along with leaders from our statewide organization and other co-ops across the state, are continually having conversations with legislators on the importance of protecting the reliability of our grid. One critical issue we as co-ops have been fighting hard is a recent ruling by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. In April of this year, the EPA issued rules restricting the operations of existing coal plants and new natural gas plants. These rules, which are designed to reduce carbon emissions, will force some plants to retire early and limit the number of hours others can operate. In making these new regulations, the EPA is short-sightedly focusing on reducing carbon emissions without addressing the big picture. These rules will sacrifice both reliability and affordability by prematurely closing down existing power plants without reliable alternative generation in place to replace the lost capacity. So what's the answer to achieving the reduced carbon future that we all strive for? We get there through a smart, well-planned transition that not only includes renewable energy, such as solar and wind that you oftentimes hear about in relation to carbon free, but also nuclear, natural gas, new technologies such as utility scale batteries similar to what we have installed at our Docks Road substation that all provide around the clock contribution to the reliability of our grid and bringing power to your home 24 seven, 365 days a year. Not by prematurely closing down existing power plants that provide constant 
reliable generation. We are doing our part, but we also need the EPA and other government agencies to do their part to put in place common sense legislation that protects the future of the capacity of the electric grid. You can do your part as well by joining Voices for Cooperative Power to help support policies that keep energy in North Carolina reliable and affordable. Visit www.voicesforcooperativepower.com to learn more or scan the QR code on your screen now to register. Every voice matters and will allow you to join us in the fight for common sense energy policies. In addition to challenges within the industry and addressing future grid reliability conversations, over the past few years, the economy has also been a difficult challenge. Everyone is extremely aware of the sharp inflation rates, leading to price hikes across various goods and general items in the economy. Our co-op has not been exempt from these increases. Just as we've all seen higher prices for groceries, we face similar price increases for essential items needed to supply power to our homes, such as cables, transformers, and vehicles. The costs have sometimes risen substantially. Additionally, we've encountered shortages and extended lead times for acquiring equipment. To illustrate the rising cost, here's a graphic that shows the increases we've experienced on essential materials that are used each day to serve our members. The cost of a standard 25 KVA pad mount transformer serving the majority of our members' homes has increased by 77% since 2020. The price of primary wire seen atop poles along the roads has surged by 90% during the same period. Other items such as cross arms and braces, 80 to 100%. Conduit, insulators, and poles, 20 to 30%. Although these price increases have started to stabilize, their lasting impact remains. With that being said, I can't emphasize enough how hard we work to avoid rate adjustments and any increased cost to our members. That is always the last resort to relay to you a rise in rates. However, on the same token, it is unfortunately a necessary part of dealing with inflation and increasing cost. In September of last year, a rate adjustment of 5% was put into place on all general service and residential rates, as well as an adjustment of $2 to the monthly basic facility charge. This followed the recommendations from a full cost of service study conducted by our financial lender and rate consultants and was driven primarily by the rise in operating cost experienced by the co-op over the last several years. Thankfully, in 2024, no adjustments to our rates or basic facility charges have been necessary. We have continued to do our best to fight off increasing costs with cost reduction and efficiency measures, including through recent changes to our construction and aid fees, which covers costs for adding new housing developments and homes, and electronic payment fee charges, fees charged to us by banks and credit card companies for processing payments. These costs to the co-op can go relatively unnoticed until you take a closer look at the numbers. For example, in 2023 alone, the co-op expensed $534,000 to credit card companies, such as Visa, MasterCard, and American Express. While it may not have been visible to you, each time you make a payment as a not-for-profit utility, these fees are absorbed into our rate structure. However, in order to combat these costs to the co-op, and ultimately you, the member, we shifted these costs to a 2.45% transaction fee for credit card payments and a flat $1 fee for electronic check payments. Now you may be saying, hang on Eddie, how is this a good thing for me? While this may seem like an additional cost, 
it is actually a way to help reduce costs to our members. The good news is that these charges will no longer be subsidized by all members. For members not utilizing these services, you will see no changes. And for members who typically pay by credit card or electronic check, there actually is good news. There are easy ways to avoid these charges through alternative payment methods, including the easiest, which is to set up a reoccurring monthly checking or savings account bank draft, which you can do by visiting your online account portal at cemcpower.com or by scanning the QR code on your screen, which will take you directly to the portal. The silver lining to this change is that it reaffirms our goal to help stabilize future cost increases to our members by reducing costs to the co-op, by not impacting your monthly electric bills, and by providing alternative ways for you to avoid the fees of electronic payments. We are working together to help reduce costs to the co-op and therefore to you, the members. Even though sometimes we may need to make adjustments, one thing that makes the cooperative model different is the value we provide back to our members. Your utility is grounded with you as the heartbeat. Adjustments do not mean larger returns for shareholders. The cooperative uses revenue to cover costs and any excess operating margins, which is the difference between revenue and expenses, is returned back directly to you, the member. There are no shareholders. You, the members, are the shareholders. The owners of the cooperative who contribute to the cost of providing electricity to your home, who then receive value back to you instead of going to investors. We do this through capital credit allocations and returns. Whenever there are margins above actual cost, a capital credit return is allocated to each and every member. We hold on to these capital credits for a period of time in order to help fund operational cost, like system maintenance and upkeep to help reduce the cost of borrowing money. This in turn helps the co-op control costs for our members. Over time, we return these credits to our members and once again this year, we are proud to continue our strong history of providing value back to our members through a retirement of capital credits. For the last 15 years in a row, we've made a capital credit general retirement. And once again this year, we're continuing that strong commitment to value for our members and making it 16 in a row. The retirement this year will pay out a portion of the balance for the year 2006 and will amount to roughly $1.1 million. That will make over $18 million returned to our members over the last 16 years. Any member who had service with the co-op during 2006 will be receiving a check. Look for your check sometime around Thanksgiving and certainly by December 1. Any amounts less than $25 will be issued as a credit shown on your billing statement that month. Remember, capital credits are your investments in your cooperative, and that business model benefits you, the member. One last comment on capital credits, and that is in regards to a question we sometimes receive. Why does it take so long to receive a capital credit return? Why 18 years? And while it may seem odd for a long time, it's actually a benefit to the membership. Capital credits are a portion of the funds that help operate the cooperative. The co-op holds on to these funds for a period of time in order to help finance improvements to the system. This also helps the co-op avoid borrowing as much money to fund system maintenance and upkeep. They serve as operating capital that funds the service provided to your home or business. At the end of the cycle, the capital credits are returned directly to the members. This return of capital credits to you, our members, is a significant identifier of the cooperative business model. Our rates are set as close to it cost as possible, and we work hard to control our cost. This drives the beauty of the not-for-profit cooperative model. 
that any revenue left over after expenses is returned directly to you, our members. Our financial ratios are right where they need to be, and the return of capital credits is your share in the financial well-being of the co-op. Our business model it is distinct due to our people first philosophy. The co-op is locally governed, which means it belongs to its members and the communities it serves. This member focus energizes the co-op. It pushes us forward and through all of the challenges we face. You are the cooperative difference. Your neighbor is the cooperative difference. Our employees and board members are the cooperative difference. We all live, work, and play right here in these same communities. Your co-op is locally governed right there. This community focus and looking out for each other's interests will always remain our primary mission. With that being said, I want to take a second to remember the unexpected loss of one of our very own earlier this year, someone who was an incredibly important part of this co-op and our community. Central board member Frank Comer, or Frankie as we all knew him, unexpectedly passed away on June 27th. For those that knew and worked with him, he was a joy to be around and an individual of outstanding character and values. He was one of the most hardworking and caring individuals I've ever had the pleasure to meet and work alongside. The co-op has lost a true champion and someone who I treasured near and dear to my heart. Not only was he a great person and member of the community, but on top of all of that, he was also a great board member and representative of this co-op. Frankie was elected to the board in 1999, faithfully representing District 1 in Lee County for 25 years. Throughout his entire service on the board, he was dedicated to this co-op and its members. Frankie was a tremendous leader, husband, father, and member of this community. While he would be profoundly missed, his legacy and the impact he left on so many of us will continue to live on for many years to come. Thank you again for spending some of your time with us and for your participation in this year's annual meeting, and most importantly, for being a part of this great co-op. God bless each of you and your families. I'd now like to turn over the mic to Meg Moss, our Director of Marketing and Member Engagement, to update us on some of our community initiatives. Meg? Thank you, Eddie. At Central Electric, our commitment to the community is a fundamental principle guiding everything we do. Community is not just a part of our mission, it's at the very core of our identity. We support our community in various ways. First, by providing grants to local nonprofits and charities through Operation Roundup, a community development program funded by the voluntary contributions of Central Electric members in order to help those in need. We also offer scholarships to local youth and dedicate our time and energy to local service projects. Over the past year, we focused on supporting those in greatest need through partnerships with the Boys and Girls Club of Central Carolina and Buddy Backpack in Harnett County. We are proud to make a tangible impact in the lives of those less fortunate. Take a look at the following videos to see how we strive to make a difference. I always wanted to give back in my hometown community and I'm from Sanford originally and so an organization that serves kids in Chatham, Harnett and Lee Counties was a perfect fit for me. Chatham Literacy is a small nonprofit and we provide adults who live or work in Chatham County with educational and literacy services. When they really see that we're here to help them, it just brings joy to our hearts and it makes us want to go and help some more. My name is Billy Kay. I'm the executive director of the Five and Two Food Pantry. One of our mottos here is anybody can fall in a hard time. That's a reason why we don't do income based here. So anybody could have a hard week and need us. In a day like today was Monday, we saw 105 people today already. Um, we average about 1600 a month. 
My name is Sarah Womack. I'm the CEO of the Boys and Girls Clubs of Central Carolina. And it's really amazing the programs that we run really meet kids where they are. So whether it's academic success and helping kids get ahead and stay ahead in the classroom, or drug and alcohol prevention, helping young men and young women become leaders and be ready for those opportunities that will come to them. I'm Dr. Sheree Smith, Executive Director of Drug Free Moore County. Um, we provide evidence-based treatment options and prevention education for youth and adults. Um, we help persons specifically who are suffering from mental health or substance use disorders. We need help from our community, so we are thankful for the members of Central Electric. Um, we're thankful for grants and all the persons that have that place in their heart that are willing to help us continue to do the things that we do. I'm Vicki Newell, Executive Director with Chatham County Literacy Council, also known as Chatham Literacy. We help folks to learn to read, write, speak, and understand English. And so all of those things then help so that somebody can navigate the healthcare system, get better paying jobs, so that they can help their children with their homework or maybe help talk to their teacher. So all these things are results of the ESOL instruction. So it's important to me because my grandmother raised me and she used to feed all the children in the neighborhood. Everyone would come to her house to eat. So as a grown up, you know, I have the same passion of feeding people that are in need or hungry. It's very important for communities to rally behind organizations such as Drug Free Moore County to make sure that we're successful and to make sure that those persons that are hurting get the help that they need for their pain relief. I'm so glad to make a difference. And it's not just me making the difference. I wanna give a huge shout out to everybody who rounds up their bill because a little bit goes a long way and that's an example of what your change is doing for our community. Thank you. Thank you members of Central Electric for donating to Operation Roundup. You give hope to so many kids in our communities and we are so grateful. Your small donation makes a big difference in our community. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Central Electric members. You're awesome. We are going to be serving the community that is food insecure in the Johnsonville, Harnett County area. So we're specifically focusing on children ages 3 to 18. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to have an assembly line. So whatever you're in front of, you put one in each bag except the ramen noodles and the pop tarts is two per bag. Buddy Backpack is a nonprofit organization that was started in 2008 by Bob and Carrie Doberstein who lived in the Johnsonville community. They saw the need for so many kids that were food insecure, especially during the weekends. Their first week, they served five children, and now weekly we serve 530 to 550. Maggie and Richard from uh, Backpack Buddies, we're just so thankful for everything that you do each and every week to serve the individuals in Harnett County who are food insecure. And we're grateful at Central Electric that we have the ability to be able to support you all today. And we're happy to present you a check for $1,000 to support your mission of uh, feeding families in Harnett County. We thank you so very much. We're very appreciative. We would like to give a big, big thank you to all the members of Central Electric that 
continually supports Buddy Backpack. We literally could not do our mission without you guys, and we are so, so appreciative of that. Now I'd like to introduce your current board of directors. President Rebecca Kogan from District 1, Vice President Tommy Dalrymple from District 1, Secretary Treasurer James B. Brooks from District 2, and Assistant Secretary Treasurer W. Philip Thompson from District 2. Also on our board of directors are Henry Randolph from District 3, Timothy Priest from District 4, Dr. Nancy Holmes from District 3, Henry Oots from District 2, and Charles E. Cameron Sr. from District 3. We appreciate our Board of Directors for their hard work. Thank you to our directors. Now, moving on in our business meeting, our bylaws provide for two methods of nomination of directors by our nominating committee and by petition. At this time, I'll provide the report of your nominating committee. The Central EMC Nominating Committee met on June 3, 2024. At that meeting, members present were Ronnie Lambert, William Bernard Stone, Zelda Howington, Carolyn Cameron, Michael V. Perry, Scott Norton, Bradley Wadsworth, Kathy Cagle Callahan, Janet Brower, and Keith Harden. The committee elected Ronnie Lambert as the chairman and Kathy Cagle Callahan as the secretary. After consideration and discussion, the nominating committee nominated the following individuals for director in the following districts. District 1, Lee County, Tommy Dalrymple. District 2, Chatham County, Debbie Philip Thompson. And District 3, Harnett County, Dr. Nancy Holmes. As I said, our bylaws provide for two methods of nomination. We have now heard the report from the nominating committee of the three individuals nominated. The second method is by petition. There were no petitions. Therefore, each of the three candidates is unopposed. All Central EMC members voted for directors by either returning a ballot through the, the United States mail or by voting electronically. Central EMC hired an independent third-party consultant, SBS, to tabulate all these members' votes. The three directors elected by the Central EMC membership are District 1, Tommy Dalrymple, who received 616 votes. District 2, W. Philip Thompson, who received 561 votes. And District 3, Dr. Nancy Holmes, who received 605 votes. So, congratulations to Mr. Dalrymple, Mr. Thompson, and Dr. Holmes. No member has presented any old or new business to come before the membership, so I turn this meeting back over to President Rebecca Kogan. Becky? At this time, the Board of Directors has no new business or old business to bring before the membership. We appreciate your participation in the business of your cooperative and remain committed to the people, the power, the progress of Central Electric Membership Corporation. The meeting will stand adjourned pending the reveal of the 2024 Annual Meeting Scholarship recipient, as well as our gift card winners. Thank you for your participation in the cooperative Stay safe, take care, and we look forward to seeing everyone again soon.